Imagine with me for just a moment that you transform your school into a thriving, supportive community filled with teachers who feel respected, students who are motivated, and where problems are resolved with empathy and compassion. What if I told you that the power and the secrets lie in harnessing emotional intelligence? In today's episode, we're gonna explore three strategies to implement emotional intelligence in a high level in education and as an educational leader. Grab a pen, a piece of paper, and get ready to take some notes because we're gonna start right now. Hey everybody, Gordon Emerson here, Superintendent of Schools and Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. And on this channel, we leverage my experience from classroom teacher to school district superintendent to help you go further, faster in your educational leadership journey. If this is your first time with us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any cool updates or any of our newest episodes. Well, hey everyone, welcome in. Today's episode, we're gonna do something not different, but we're gonna unpack and explore a topic that is really, really important to me, and it has been really, really foundational in my educational leadership journey. And that is to think about the power and the leverage of what using and understanding your emotional intelligence can do and can be for you as an educational leader. As a superintendent, as a principal, as a director, any number of positions. As a matter of fact, let's actually stop for a second. As a classroom teacher, if we're able to leverage and harness what emotional intelligence can be and how it can give us kind of untapped power, power not in, the, in, in, in a corrupted way, but power to be able to impact, influence, motivate, inspire the people around us, our students, our staff, our colleagues, our parents, we can leverage EI in a way that builds kind of a transformational environment where we're able to get more done and how we're able to do more good for more people. So I really want to talk through how we leverage and use EI, emotional intelligence, as an educational leader, but from a broader context, from kind of a more a bigger picture, how do we use EI as an educator, as a professional, someone who's there to nurture, support, mentor, educate, inspire people around us, right? So we're gonna explore three kind of frameworks, big ideas around emotional intelligence, EI, and we're gonna start with number one. All right, let's start with strategy number one. And strategy number one is how do we utilize and understand emotional intelligence in the context of educational leadership? Now, there are five components to emotional intelligence. So let me share what those five components are for you. They are self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills. Now, we can take those one at a time but what I would invite you to do is actually, if you check the description below of the video, there's a link to my newsletter. And in my newsletter, I do a weekly kind of unpacking of one of those five tenets of emotional intelligence. So whether it's social skills or it's self-awareness, if it's empathy, any of those, you'll find that in the newsletter. It's a, it's a weekly tidbit of how you leverage and understand emotional intelligence. But let me unpack it for just a moment here to give you a sense. When you're thinking about emotional intelligence, you're thinking about how do I use this and leverage this in the context of being an educational leader or an educator, what we're really talking about is really working on our soft skills. Our soft skills of being able to be an effective communicator. Our soft skills of being able to be an empathetic and compassionate person in our interpersonal communication and connections with folks, those interpersonal relationships. If we're able to tap into our EI, we can leverage our IQ, those, you know, the technical skills that we have, that, that, in that high level of intelligence that we may have, our school, our education, whatever the case may be. We wanna draw on that, but we really wanna start to talk about how we can draw on our soft skills. Leverage our hard skills to enhance our soft skills. Take all of that knowledge and expertise and experience that we have and then apply the human dynamics 
of being compassionate, of being empathetic, of being self-aware. When we're self-aware, when we can recognize what our limitations are, when we can recognize what our vulnerabilities are, we're more aware, but we're also in a better position to respond appropriately to people. We're in a better position to support the needs of other human beings when we are self-aware, when we're self-reflective. So thinking about these five domains of emotional intelligence, unpacking them, learning about them, exploring them, making meaning of them for yourself is quintessential to growing your knowledge, your skills, and your capacity as a leader. And so if you want to effectively transform your school's culture, transform your school's climate, transform your district's culture, your district's climate, stop thinking about the hard skills and the metrics and start thinking about the human dynamics of what it means to be a leader. Because those heartbeats, all those people that you come in contact with, they all have heartbeats, they all have emotions, they all have needs. And it won't always be your hard skills that can meet their needs. But when you land a compassionate ear, an empathetic spirit, with some self-awareness, you can do great things and you can create a great space for people. So the very first thing you wanna do if you wanna implement EI into your organization is to unpack and understand those five domains of emotional intelligence. And that's strategy number one. All right, as we transition and we move into strategy number two, uh, share with me in the comments below, what qualities do you think define an emotionally intelligent leader? Share those with us in the comments below. What qualities, what attributes do you look for in an emotionally, emotionally intelligent leader? Share that in the comments below and we're gonna move to strategy number two. We think about strategy number two. Strategy number two is it's gonna build off of strategy one where we had this, these ideas of these five constructs of emotional intelligence and now we're gonna move from knowing what they are to developing emotional intelligence as an educational leader. And what that looks like is a deep commitment to self-awareness, a deep commitment to self-reflection, taking the time to think and reflect, take stock of your work, take stock of the people around you, journaling, meditating, stepping back and just observing the environment and the space are the strategies and the steps that emotionally intelligent leaders take on a daily basis. I meditate. I meditate before I actually get out of my car and go into the office because I want to take a moment to pause. I want to take a moment to reflect. I want to take a moment to engage in the work at a, at a high at a hyper cognitive level, I wanna take a moment to engage in the work of what it is that I need to do to be there for people that day. To set aside the things that might be blocking me, I'm like, I'm checking in for myself. The things that might be blocking me from being emotionally available, to check in on the things that might be uh, blocking me from being able to be authentically engaged and connected to people. So I'll take a moment and I'll pause and I'll try to clear that mechanism before I go in. Because when I go into the office, I wanna be 100% available. I wanna be 100% engaged and ready to connect. So on that note, another really important piece of being an emotionally intelligent leader is to be thoughtful about our ability to engage and connect. And what that looks like is being an active listener. So you say, okay, well, let me think for a second. Active listening. Well, that's hard. <laughs> active listening is very hard. It's difficult. Well, think about it. You, you spend your, your career, you spend your education building up all of this knowledge and expertise in a subject area, in a content area, math, science, social studies, history, English literature, multilingual, physical education, whatever that is. 
but you build up this education of being an expert. And so you're constantly peppered with questions that make you leverage your expertise. So now what I'm, and so after over time, as you build up that knowledge and that expertise, you begin to feel that you want to answer questions right when they're given to you. I'm guilty of it as well. I have to figure out ways to turn down the volume low enough to listen longer. Turn down your volume and listen longer to the conversation that's being had between you and another individual. They may not be asking for a solution, but they may be trying to make meaning of a situation. They may be just seeking out the ear of someone so they can kind of lay everything out on the table, but they maybe already have a solution to the problem, but they just need to say it, say it out loud. And they just need you in that moment to be the type of leader who can just connect, who can just build rapport, who can just build a relationship. So as you think about developing emotional intelligence, you're thinking about how am I self-reflective and self-aware, but then also how am I building empathy in my social skills as an active listener, as an effective communicator, tapping in to the emotional needs, tapping into the social emotional developmental needs of our students and of our staff. How are you tapping into that? How are you leveraging that? And so as you start to experiment with different ideas and structures and systems where you're offering platforms and listening sessions, and you're offering the opportunity to have dialogue and discussions about different topics, topics that you may know a lot about, you may not know anything about, but when you create a space, when you create an opportunity for people to be able to discuss and dialogue and debate, you are engaging in highly effective, emotional, intelligent leadership qualities because you are able to create the condition and the environment for these things to happen. And that's what strong EI leaders do. So thinking about strategy number two, it's all about developing, developing those skills, developing those strategies, developing the frameworks that would allow you to be a highly effective, highly engaged, emotionally intelligent leader. So put these practices in place, take a moment, reflect, and then react. Take a moment, listen, and then listen longer. Create a good headspace for yourself, but also create great avenues and platforms to engage and connect with others. This is how you're gonna develop that EI at a very, very high level, and that's strategy number two. All right, let's talk about strategy number three. Strategy number three is implementing emotional intelligence as an educational leader. So if we, we think about kind of the arc of our content today, number one, we talked about understanding. Number two, we talked about developing. And now we're talking about implementing. And you're gonna be somewhere along this continuum. If you're new and you're just now learning and experiencing what emotional intelligence is, then you'll likely be working to understand those five domains. If you're a little bit further along, you're gonna to start to talk about how do you develop? How do you build these skills? How do you build strategies around being more self-reflective? How do you build journaling techniques? How do you build reflective activities to be able to make meaning and step back and take in more feedback and take in more information? How do you build systems to be much more effective as, as a communicator? That's, that's that developing arc. Or maybe you're implementing, maybe you're ready to implement Edu uh, emotional intelligence into your school site or into your department. So let's talk about what that looks like. Creating a culture that is EI rich. Creating a culture of nurturing, of empathy, of compassion, of wanting to take care and support other people, of wanting to understand their needs, their challenges, the issues that they may be going through by which you as a leader might be in a leveraged position to be able to solve or address or mediate. How do we create that culture? How do we create that environment? Well, we're gonna focus on the social emotional development of both our staff and our students. This is, you know, this is where the rubber meets the road because people are walking in and 
they are coming in with everything that is happening around them in their lives. The good, the bad, the ups, the downs, the triumphs, the tribulations. And as leaders, we want to create a space where those things can be explored. Those things can be addressed. So that way we can get about the work of educating kids. We can get about the work of creating a space where learning, where learning can happen. So as we think about implementation, we're going to create opportunities for people to be able to thrive in good times and in bad. And as leaders, we create that space by building opportunities on ramps. What types of spaces are you creating for students to be able to thrive emotionally? What spaces are you creating for staff to be able to thrive emotionally and intellectually? Are we creating a curriculum that is rich in exploring those needs? Are we developing professional development modules and models? Are we making commitments to professional development that is gonna grow and develop the emotional intelligence of our staff? That's where our focus and our time and attention should be. If we wanna create an EI rich environment, then we've gotta put the resources in place. We've gotta put the structures and the systems in place. Those things have to become a part of who we are. As leaders, we owe it to our staff to do that. We owe it to our staff to give them a place in a space where they're gonna thrive. Our job is to help other people thrive. We sit in the pilot seat of determining where we go and what we do. So what do you do with that power, that leverage, that impact, that influence? We want to we wanna do something good for folks. And focusing on the emotional needs of people is really important, more so, more so than ever now. Because I, I think about March 13th, 2020. And I think about when the world kind of started to change a little bit. And yes, it was important to make sure that we had the activities, the learning modules, the instructional components. Yes, that's always going to be important. But it was just as important, and in my opinion, and this might, might not be the opinion of every person, but it's mine, in that moment, more than anything, people needed to know that emotionally we were going to care for their needs because they weren't sure what was going to happen next. I wasn't sure. So let's think about the, the, the emotionally intelligent leader in that moment when you're going through trials, tribulations, not and when I say you, I mean like the whole system because you are, as a leader, you're the extension of the system. So it wasn't just your problem. It was the entire system's problem. What do you do as a leader in that moment? And this is where you want to have your own emotional intelligence chops that are up to speed and ready to go. You want to know that you can emotionally deal with the issues. You need to be able to check your own emotions at the door because the expectation is you're going to be emotionally available and emotionally uh, in a position to support the needs of other people. So thinking about all the stuff that we talked about earlier in this same episode around what strategies do you put in place for yourself to be reflective, to be aware, to be empathetic? What social skills are you putting in place to be able to connect and engage and build rapport and actively listen? All of this is interconnected. But if you want to be a highly engaged and highly effective, emotionally intelligent leader, these are the types of things you want to think about. We're here to build systems, systems that are better for the adults and better for the kids. That's our charge. Investing in emotional intelligence, investing in your, in your development, your skills, your knowledge, that's exactly the work that we all need to invest more time in. I don't think we're spending enough time in investing in these soft skills as leaders. So my commitment is to go deep on these types of topics because I think it is going to serve you well as an educator, as a leader. And if you wanna know more about how we invest in ourselves and our skills and our leadership capacity, our leadership development, check out this next video. It's gonna to help to build on these foundational skills of being a good educational leader. 
It's gonna give you more skill building capacity. It's gonna leverage more strategies that are gonna help you to be able to do more and do better for more people. That's our charge. That's what we wake up for. If you're not waking up thinking about other people, if you're waking up thinking about yourself, more power to you. But the types of leaders that I'm looking for and that I know that my colleagues are looking for, we're looking, pe looking for people who are all about meeting the needs of others. That's the leadership capacity that we're looking for. So again, if you wanna learn more and you're ready to do the next step, check out this next video. If you want more information on EI, more information on Cliffs and Strengths, coaching, mentorship, check the description below. There's gonna be more information that will be available there. And we're gonna see you on the next one. Check out this next video. We'll see you. Be well.